this. I'm not talking to you in here. Sorry about that. I realized that we're streaming on YouTube, and I realized that um, that our uh, that that uh, our YouTube was causing an echo effect. How's everybody? Good. Trying to get stuff set up over here, see how things are. And uh, I'm going to um, Allison, how are you, girl? Were you playing? Ba Did you play basketball yesterday? Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. I need, to, I need to come watch you play basketball. I didn't get to see you very much during the school year play. You can't have it in two rooms. Yeah, having it in two rooms causes a massive echo. So is it now? Is it like uh, the basketball that you play, Allison? Is that like AU basketball? Is that is that how it is? Yes. So do you guys have any more games, or is just is it just all like tournament play? We have two today. You all have two today. We're at Branson. I'm in Branson right now. What? That's awesome. Where are y'all staying at? A Holiday Inn. Oh, okay. Okay. We stayed at, uh, last time I went to Branson, we stayed at the Grand Country Inn. And now, like, like my Jonathan, you know, the youngest one, that's all he associates Branson with is Grand Country Inn. <laughs> oh. Hi, Emery. How are you? Oh. What's up, Emery? How's it going? Emery's ignoring me. Oh, she's connecting to audio. That's what she's doing. We can see if there's anybody on our YouTube channel. And hey, we're also in case if you have if you start to have an issue with um, with uh, Zoom, sometimes it can happen. We do also have it's streaming right now on YouTube. Um, so you can, uh, you can watch it that way. In fact, I'll put the uh, link in the chat. I see chat. There's chat. All right. In case y'all want to watch it on YouTube. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and help us subscribe. Crispy Bacon's on there. What's up, Crispy Bacon? How are you? Um, want to talk to you guys about just a couple of things before we uh, jump into it today. Oh, what did I just do? I just got, that's not. <sighs> I did, no, I disconnected my my second screen. I gotta fix it. Give me just a minute. I just did control P. Anyway. There we go. I think I'm back now. Get everything back set up. Um, 
Who would it be not want to be agreeable? Let's see where everything's being cattywampus. Hey, there's Noah. What's up, Noah? Good to see you, buddy. What's up, Noah? Nothing much. <laughs> All right, like I said, uh, if in case you have issues, uh, YouTube is streaming. It is uh, in the in the link to the YouTube stream is right there in uh, our chat. Uh, and if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, help us out. Help help grow the channel, if you will, and uh, subscribe. And so super excited to have all you guys joining us and uh, a couple of people wanted to come here. And, and so we're all socially distant and hanging out. And um, and so y'all can y'all can say hi out there in the in the in in the back. Hey, hello there. So yeah. And so we got Noah and Allison and Emery's on there and uh, uh, crispy bacon's on on the YouTubes. So helping us out that way. But anyway, hey guys, just a couple of things uh, as we get started. Uh, we are doing uh, we're doing Sunday school uh and uh and so i'll be doing this for for a time until uh your sunday school teachers uh are able to come back and do it and so um i'm 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 excited to be hanging out with you guys as always i'm always excited to hang out with your faces anyway uh just a couple of things that we have oops did not want to mess that up. all right a couple of things that we have um coming up i'll i'll throw this up here uh is this is uh we have we have, of course, Sunday school on Zoom and YouTube. There's no, oh, I didn't mean to say Tuesdays. There's no Instagram Live on Fridays. Ignore where it says Tuesdays. We do have it. Well, we will have Instagram Live on Tuesday. Uh, July 15th, in-person youth. I'm so excited about this. Um, I'm excited. Are you guys excited about having youth back? Very very yes 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 a thousand and one yeses um it's going to be from 5 30 to 8 and uh meals a meal is going to be provided i think we're going to do pizza wednesday uh and i think we are uh we uh yeah so we're going to do meals also masks are going to be encouraged so we want to encourage you to bring your mask to wear your mask uh, how it's going to work out is, um, you know, if whoever you came with, you can sit with. Uh, and, and if it's been somebody that you've been, you've spent a lot of time hanging out with, like say, for instance, you are Ethan and you've been hanging out with Noah or Chris uh, or, you know, somebody like that, you, you can sit together and that's fine. But if, uh, you know, but for instance, you know, Noah and, um, Noah and uh, let's say Christian McCamey. If, if they came, they would need to sit separate. If that makes sense, um, you know we're gonna we're gonna do our best to be. It's gonna be safe. We're gonna be be as best as what we can to be safe. Uh, we're I'm encouraging guys to to wear the masks. Uh, we will have masks in case you don't have a mask. Uh, and we're actually looking into ordering student. Uh, our, 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 our student ministry masks where you can have one with you all the time. And they're super cool. Okay. I was hoping anyway, I'm good. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm not weird. Um, but uh, it's going to be July 15th in person youth. It's going to be from five 30 to eight uh, meals provided mask are encouraged. Uh, it, like I said, if you forget to bring your mask, no worries. We have, we'll have one for you. Um, and so that's what we got going on. Uh, today we're talking about when has the promise of a reward helped you face a challenge? And so, um, this is how it's going to work. This is usually, you know, I know that I know the weirdness is that if we are, 
if you know there's a weird feeling about speaking into like a microphone or a video and so but i don't want this to be me just talking the whole time okay i want to hear from you guys i also want to hear from you guys in the audience so um what does hope mean to you tell me what does hope mean to you a beacon of light a beacon of light all right Y'all else, I want, I want to hear from lots of y'all. So tell me, what does hope mean to you? And you guys over there on the Zoomies or over there on, uh, on the YouTube, uh, I want to hear from you. What does hope mean to you? What does hope mean? Come on, y'all wake up, wake up, wake up. What does hope mean? Ethan, what does hope mean? Hope means like having a reason to keep going. I like that, having a reason to keep going. What about you guys? What about you guys on Zoom? What does hope mean? Gives you something to live for. That's that's really true. That's 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 good, Allison. I like that. I like that. Um, and for us, the believer, what is the thing that like you know? What is the thing that we look for? We can look forward to the most when we die. What is the thing that we can look forward to the most when we die? Going to heaven. Exactly. Do what? A big, a big mansion. Yeah, but going to heaven, right? Uh, there's this guy that I want to show you a video clip of. of. His name is Craig Groeschel. Um, and he talks about what heaven is, uh, what heaven will be like. And so I'm going to show it on here. Um, it should be on our YouTube. Uh, so I'm going to, and I'll see if I can try to turn this around to where y'all can see this out here in the, in the audience, because I don't know what else to call y'all. Uh, but all right, so this is a video called "What Will Heaven Be Like," and it's a and it's a and it's sermon clips by uh, a guy by the name of Craig Groeschel, famous, uh, famous. What will heaven be like? Heaven is the absence of everything bad, painful, and evil. It's the presence of everything good, holy and glorious. Whatever you're passionate about, it appears you'll get to do that. Maybe in some form of job, serving Jesus. If you like singing, it's gonna be singing, whatever it is, we're gonna use our gifts in a way that is glorious, productive, and we will rule and reign with the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever your stupid team wins and you like go crazy, okay, for all eternity, you are ruling and reigning with the King of all kings. It's the presence of everything good, holy, right, and just, the absence of everything evil and painful. What will you not find in heaven? There will be no more death, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more sickness, no more fear, no more stress, depression, sleepless nights, anxiety, no more abuse, no more heartache, no more divorce, racism, injustice, violence, the presence of everything good, the absence of everything evil. Whatever you think of heaven, it will be better. No eye has ever seen it. No mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. That's a pretty cool video. Isn't it? I like that. I like. I kind of like Craig Groeschel. He's a pretty cool guy. Um, you know, um, and so, but he describes what heaven is going to be like, and he describes how it'll be this 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 place for us. And really, as believers, that's the hope that we have. You know, that's that's the thing that drives us. The the idea that there is going to come a day when. We don't have to worry about the pains, the, the hurts, the, all these things, these injustices and stuff like that. And it gives us a hope. So we're going to be looking at scripture this morning. And so if you have your Bibles, if you have it on the Bible app, or if you're, if you're at a situation where you can't 
swap apps or maybe you have the physical Bible with you. Uh, I'm going to throw it up here on the screen in just a minute, but it's 1 Peter 5, 7. 1 Peter 5, I'm sorry, 1 Peter 5, beginning in verse 5 and the second half of verse 5, what we call B, and working all the way through verse 7. And, uh, you know, Peter, he has this unique word um, that in which we translate into clothe, um, and, 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 and we'll talk more about it in just a minute. And so this is what, excuse me, this is what, uh, this is what it says. First Peter five, uh, beginning of verse five, the second half of five says this, all of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another because God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So go and humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you at the proper time, casting all your cares on him because he cares about you. Now, Peter uses this word clothe, um, you know, how we translate it as clothe. It's the only time we kind of see this word uh, used in the New Testament and describes like this apron worn by slaves. Uh, slaves would wear this particular piece of clothing um, over their outer garments to distinguish them from, the, from others who were free. And Peter was calling believers to take the humility like a garment of a slave. To be set apart, to be different. Uh, than everybody else. And when he writes this, this is something interesting when he does it. Uh, it it's almost like uh, there's, there's this other time when Peter saw something like this actually happening face to face where, to where somebody who was like not a slave, not a servant, took the apron and put it on and this is when he saw it done with jesus when jesus uh tied a slave's apron around his waist uh took a basin of water and washed his disciples feet and what makes this interesting is to wash somebody's feet makes you lower than the person whose feet that you're washing so jesus who we look to as high and as, 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 you know, up here, right? Jesus himself makes himself lower than us. And he goes and washes the disciples' feet. And that's the, Peter saw that and he remembered and he learned to live, try to live as that example. Now he wasn't perfect, you know, he, he, you know, Peter was just like you and me. We mess up, say things we shouldn't say, act in ways we shouldn't. Act. But he strived to live a life that followed that example of Jesus being willing to put on a servant's apron and to wash disciples' feet. And so thinking about that and thinking about in terms of what we just read, all of you clothe yourselves with humility. Think about that. For Jesus doing that to wash his disciples' feet, that was the ultimate example of humility. For you and for me, that's the ultimate example of humility. You know, it puts us in, when we, when we choose to be humble above everything else and put other people ahead of us, you know, it, 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 it creates in us a disposition that allows for intimacy with God. When we allow God to be first in our lives and us to be second, it enables us to grow closer with God. And as we do that, and it's a life process, and as we do that, um, as we submit to God's commands, as we submit to God's purposes, we begin to show and we begin to understand ourselves that his, his control of, of his control over our lives, how we allow God, where to allow God to move and to work in our lives, his grace, his provision and our suffering when we go through hardships that God is there for us. And as well as the big, perhaps maybe the biggest of, the, of, of these three things we're, we're, we're looking at right now is the sacrifice of his only son and how that provides for us the hope that we have to where one day when we die, we will go to a place of no more sin, no more suffering, no more hate, 
all those things, all those things that, that are there because of sin, we will no longer have to face one day. And to be humble as a believer means that we acknowledge that these great, that these gifts are freely given to us. That it's nothing that you and I try, can try to earn, to brag about, but they were given to us freely through, through Jesus because of God being a father who cares about us, who loves us. And so, all right, now let me ask you some questions and I want you guys to, to answer. You can either write in the chat or you can speak out loud or you guys out here can speak or uh, if anybody's watching us on YouTube right now, you can, uh, you can comment there. But why is pride such a big deal when uh, God examines our hearts? Why is pride such a big deal? What makes pride such a big deal when God examines our hearts? Noah said, with pride, we won't always own up to our mistakes. Yeah, we kind of just, you, you, you kind of just blame it on something else or you justify why something happened the way it happened. Um, you know, if we have pride, you know, and if we're, if we're kind of puffed up on ourselves, then, um, you know, then, then we don't, you know, we can't really listen to God when God's saying, hey, look, this is what's going on because we try to, you know, we, we're so prideful in who we are as a person that we are unwilling to see that. And that's a problem in the walk of a believer. Now, is pride a bad thing? Can I ask you this? Is pride a bad thing? Y'all can shout it out, write it in the chat. You guys out here can speak. Is pride a bad thing? No? No, pride is not a bad thing. There's things you can be proud of. Like I'm proud of like, you know, I'm proud of, of what I'm proud of, like what we have as a church have been trying to do with, with meeting online. You know, we've, you know, we're not, but we've been doing some really cool stuff. I'm proud of the fact that you guys are, are, are so faithful in coming. I'm proud of the fact that, you know, you know, that I was, that, that I like my first race I ever ran, I'm really proud of the fact for my age group, I got a medal. I mean, there's, we can be pride. We can have pride about, you know, uh, taking in, in the things that we did, the hard work that we did um, and not be prideful. You know, the difference is, is that when we become to such a point to where we think that we're so much better than somebody else, mm -hmm. then, then what we can really, you know, try to do. And so, that's the problem. That's what, that's when we move from taking pride in something, taking pride in like a good grade or something like that and becoming prideful. And so I want to kind of make sure we understand that there's nothing in and of itself wrong with pride. As long as it doesn't, we don't take on an attitude of pridefulness in what, um, in what we, uh, in, in who we think we are. And that's, that's when pride becomes a problem. That's when pride becomes a, a sinful thing. So let's, let's kind of unpack this a little bit further. We're talking about how Peter says, all of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God so that he may exalt you at the proper time, casting all your cares on him because he cares for you. Peter says, don't be prideful. Peter says, show humility, cast your cares, give your cares to God, allow God to take care of them, and, and you clothe yourselves with humility. Let's move on and see what he says in verses 8 through 9. This is what he says, and beginning in verse 8, it says this. It says, be sober-minded, be alert. Your adversary, the devil, is prowling around like a roaring lion looking for anyone he can devour. Resist him firm in the faith, knowing that the same kind of sufferings are being experienced by your fellow believers throughout the world. Mm -hmm. 
So here, Paul, Peter, he goes on to say, you know, that, hey, even, you know, as you try to humble yourself, guess what? There's going to be somebody that's going to come at you. Who is that somebody that's trying to come at us? The devil. And the devil is certainly like strong with the things that it says. I mean, think about it. You know, a lot of times we tend to just kind of, you know, make it look like Adam and Eve were, were ignorant, but really he, he spoke in such a way that it almost made sense for them to do what they did. And so, you know, and so that just because he's brought, he's very crafty with words. Do you know somebody that's like really good with the things they say? Like, they could, they could, you know, they could just, they could talk paint off a wall, you know, to where it's just like they have a way of just communicating things to where things happen, you know. Uh, and sometimes, you know, and you might have that friend that can talk into doing something that you don't want to do. Um, that's kind of how the devil is. The devil will speak to you in such a way as to tempt you and to make you maybe be prideful, to make you kind of give in to your fears and your worries or to, you know and to be the direct opposite of what peter is trying to get at that's why peter says be sober-minded be alert because this devil he's going to try to trip you up he's going to try to talk to you he's going to try to try to tempt you to get you to move to where he wants you to move and he's you know he's strong you know we need to realize that the devil is very crafty i mean how many times have you you've you know, you, you felt so strong to do something that you gave into it, you know? I mean, that's just how the devil works. The devil's very, he is very, very uh, convincing with his words. But there's somebody that's stronger than the devil. And you know this, and you guys out here know this, and, and it's Jesus. The devil may be strong in trying to lure us away, but Jesus is stronger. And the object of our faith is Jesus. So the object of our faith is stronger than the devil. It should cause us to want to be drawing closer to that because the, sh the closer you get to something, the more of a pull it has on you. Just think about this. You know, the closer that, that, a, um, that a planet, think about in terms of planets, okay? Sorry about the science lesson. Don't worry, I'm not, I'm not a science expert. But... Um, the closer a planet gets to a to the sun, the more it gets closer to the temperature of it, and the faster its rotation becomes. Because as you get closer to something that's as you as a planet gets closer to the sun, the gravitational pull of the sun kind of gets it gets stronger and stronger. The same is true in our walk with Christ. The closer we get to Christ, the more we begin to emulate who Jesus is and the stronger his pull is on our lives. We resist the devil through our trust in Jesus who has defeated the enemy. You know, and it's kind of interesting with this, you know, Peter brought to our attention the similar suffering of believers around the world, even as he sought to help the church grow and encourage and resolve. Because others have gone through similar things, they could fight with the understanding that they are not alone. Fellow believers were experiencing and resisting the temptations and sufferings all over the world. So for us, the same is true for us today. We can have that same hope despite the suffering that we are going through. And just kind of let me, this is what I have in my book you read this to you and it might just kind of be you know this this thing that just kind of wow in america we kind of we're, we're you know we as christians we're pretty free to do and to worship as we please and we can speak the name of jesus in public without without being arrested or things like that because we have freedom but think about this uh, every month on average this is around the world 345 Christians are killed for faith-related reasons. 105 churches and Christian buildings are burned or attacked. And 219 Christians are detained without trial. They're arrested, they're sentenced, and in prison. That's the world. 
as we become aware of the persecuted church and the things that the church is going through, we need to be turning that knowledge into prayer. We need to be praying for the persecuted church. We need to be praying for each other. You know, and, and, and so one of the things I want to encourage you is that as you pray about the persecuted church, thinking about in terms of our hope that we have, as you pray and become aware of how others are fighting the good fight, I want to encourage you, let it be an encouragement to you as you face your own hardships. Now, let me ask you guys this question. How can, because there's a phrase that uh, we didn't really talk about a little bit, but I want to ask you this. How can Christians stay sober-minded? Y'all tell me, how can Christians stay sober-minded and alert to the devil's attacks? How does that, how do we do that? We stay close to God. How do we do it? How do we stay close to God? How do we, how do we stay alert? Pray, reading the Bible, go to church regularly. What were you saying? He's going to say anything. What did we get about you guys out there, you know? And, and I think Chris is, Chris is really, really right there with it, you know, and I, it's probably what we all would say is that it's the basic things of prayer and of, of reading God's word and, and coming to church. Those are the tools that we have that helps to stay sober-minded, to help us stay focused and alert on what God would have for us. So let's kind of wrap this up. Let's kind of wrap up what we've been talking about, about this hope that we have, the hope of heaven and how it means for us to be humble, how it means for us to stay alert uh, and to draw closer to God. But look at 1 Peter 5, 10 through 11. If you have your Bibles, 1 Peter 5, 10 through 11. And let's, uh, let's kind of wrap this up. And I'm going to ask you guys some questions. I'm going I'm to stop the live stream and ask you all a couple of questions about Sunday school. So this is what it says in 1 Peter chapter 5, beginning in verse 10. It says, God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, establish, strengthen, and support you after you have suffered a little while. To him be dominion forever. Amen. Now, God here points out in this, there's, there's some things that here points out about about our, 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 about how God relates to us, about how, um, how specific our actions are that are based on our hope in Christ. And the first thing is this is restore. We are restored. Because of sin, we're, we have a broken relationship with God. But through Christ, we can have a restored relationship with God. God himself will make us right so we become mature, lacking nothing, as he shapes us into the image of his son. So we're restored. The second thing is that we're also, it says, you know, Christ will himself restore, establish as well. This gives us the idea of having a firm footing. Um, once he has restored us, God gives us a firm foundation under our feet as we live out our salvation in a manner worthy of the gospel. Also, it strengthens. Christ will strengthen. The idea is kind of this promise to the nation of Israel, don't fear for I am with you. I am your God, I will strengthen you. In other words, you know, Christ will himself restore us, he will establish us, he will strengthen us. He will give us the, the, the strength needed to not live in fear, to not live in, in uh, worry. When we deal with hard times, when we go through struggles because of what we have at the end of this life. Christ himself will restore. Christ himself will establish. Christ himself will. Uh, will strengthen and, and Christ himself will support that when we go through hard times. Because here's the thing, y'all. Here's the thing. Um, if you hear people talk about how if you are a believer, you're going to have everything easy. God's going to bless you with money and riches and stuff like that. They're lying. It's not true. 
just because we are a believer does not mean that we're going to have an easy life. In fact, our life is going to be harder because of who we belong to. And so we're going to deal with suffering. We're going to deal with hardships. But we don't have to do it alone. We can go through it knowing that Christ is there with us. And think about this. Did, I mean, was, was, was on the cross, was that like, an, like a joyous thing for Jesus to do? Was he like, man, I get to go and die on a cross. Yay. I get to have nails rammed through my skin and I get to be beaten and have a crown shoved on my head. I can be whipped with stuff that's got bone and glass. Please, please hit me again and put some firepower into it. You know, was, Jesus was not, that, that was not something enjoyable. Jesus himself understands what is, is like to suffer. And because he knows that, he knows what we go through when we suffer. And he is there with us to guide us as we go through the suffering to encourage us, to strengthen us. We're going to suffer hardships in this life. And Peter wrote three words that stand out to grab our attention. He says, Christ will himself restore, establish, strengthen, and support you after you have suffered a little while. Suffering is not permanent. It's only temporary. The ways we live, especially in our difficult times, will be a clear picture to others about the things we value and the difference Jesus makes in our lives. So I want to encourage you, I want to challenge you when you're going through hardships, when you're going through difficulties, when things are not working out. Let those moments be moments where your faith shines. Let those moments be moments where your faith just shows right through. And just remember this, the devil is strong, but Jesus, who's the object of our faith, is stronger. And he provides the foundation for our resistance. So a couple questions for you to ask, for you to kind of think about is, is this, how can you make sure to maintain an eternal perspective when life is overwhelming? Oh my goodness. I don't know if y'all can hear this. I can hear this and it's driving me insane. I'm going to see if I can disconnect this. Um, just one minute. Nope, I can't. Somebody sneezing because they have allergies. It's not the COVID. Um, but how can you make sure to maintain eternal perspective when life is overwhelming? And if you need to talk to somebody about it, talk to them about it. Talk to them about, you know, you know, you can talk to a leader or maybe a trusted friend or your parent about um, how to live and how to think like this. And then I want to challenge you to do this as well. Make it a point every day this week to pray for fellow believers who are suffering. Pray for boldness. Pray for wisdom. Pray for efforts to share the gospel, pray for those who gather to, for worship in secret of fear. Pray for those who are imprisoned for the sake of the gospel. And then um, I want to ask you these final two questions for you to think about and try to, try to examine this this week. Is that what do you fear will happen if you share your faith boldly? And how, make, how might God make a difference despite your apprehension if you share your faith? I promise you, it'll be worth it. I'm not going to promise you it's going to be like you start sharing your faith and people start coming to know Jesus, you know. That could happen. But it could also be that your friends look at you and say, no. Or they might get mad at you and, and be ugly to you and, and, and respond negatively. 
You see, God just simply calls you and me to share. That's all he does. He calls us to be obedient, to share our faith. The re response of the person is their responsibility. It's not yours. You are simply called to share the gospel. And so I don't want you to be afraid to share your gospel, uh, to share the gospel. I want you to be encouraged to do that, knowing that when you do that, you're simply being obedient to God. We have a hope of heaven. And God calls us to share that hope, to be humble, to not live in fear, but to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with our friends. So I want to challenge you to do that this week. We're going to pray, and then uh, I'm going to stop last year, and I'll ask you just a couple questions uh, before, we, before we go. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for all that you've done. Father, I pray that um, you just be with us, Lord. I pray, give us the boldness to, to share our faith. Give us the boldness to share the gospel with our friends. Father, I pray that you just uh, encourage, uh, that, that you encourage us in those moments to, to share the gospel, this great hope that we have of one day being with you in heaven. Be with us as we go, as we go throughout the rest of our, our day. Be with us as we, as we, go, to, as we go into worship with, uh, with the rest of the church, Father. And, and thank you so much for allowing us the opportunity to have Sunday school. And that's your name, I pray. Amen. All right, guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop live stream.